Hello, and welcome to this edition of Manager's Corner. I'm Jim Cousins, and I'm your host, where I introduce you to people who are involved in running Hopkinton's town government. Joining me today is Chris McClure, who is our IT director. Chris, thanks very much for taking the time to be on the show. Thank you for having me, Jim. All right. Now, before we get to Hopkinton, before we start talking about your work here, I'd like to know a little bit about you. So where did you grow up? I was born in Muncie, Indiana. Okay. I grew up there for 19 years. Okay. So have you always been um, techy growing up, or was it something that came to you later? No, absolutely not. I mean, sometimes it's like that song, you know, how did I get here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I grew up. Um, you know, Muncie, Indiana is kind of a poor blue collar town in the Midwest. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up in the Catholic Church and actually was pretty seriously considering becoming a priest. Okay. Uh, you know, up until 16 or 17. Okay. Um, I entered Ball State University as a psychology major. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I was 19, just decided head east. Just, just head east? Yeah. No, did you have like a plan? Did you have a job or you just came, jumped on the train no, and came I, out No, I had some weird calling to come to Massachusetts. I took a train, came out here, had no place to stay, uh -huh. nothing lined up. I went to UMass Lowell, continued in psychology. Wow. How, how did you support yourself <clears throat> during that time? Uh, I worked, uh, you know, uh, cooked and a, you know, a few odd jobs here mm -hmm. and there. And mm -hmm. um, I ultimately um, ended up working uh, for a homeless shelter okay. in Lowell. Okay. So you go, you go to Lowell, and at that time you were a psychology major. Yep. Did you graduate as a psychology major? No, I changed my mind. Okay. Um, while I was working with the, uh, with the homeless, I decided that I wanted to be a teacher. Okay. And I've always had an affinity for history, so I switched majors mm -hmm. about halfway through, um, and I actually ended up graduating with a history degree from UMass Lowell. Oh, okay. Now, what's your favorite kind of history? Uh, honestly, I like American folk history. Mm -hmm. um, I'm big into like the folk uh, music movement of the 1940s okay. and like some of the early blues. Okay. Uh, so when you say folk history, it's about the music. The music. Because I know folk yeah. music, but I didn't know if there's a different yeah. kind. Well, of just the whole. Yeah, I mean, you know, folk history and you know some of the old stories and. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So now you graduated as um, a history major. Did you get to teach? No. While I was working at uh, a transitional center in Lowell for mentally ill homeless men, mm -hmm. uh, we worked with the adult education center to get a grant uh, to do GED classes okay. uh, for the homeless guys there, uh, which fit into me wanting to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. As part of that, we had some money. Uh, we built a computer lab. We got some donations. Okay. Um, started building networks and oh, really? uh, you know connecting machines and. Um, now, what was the technology like back then? Like, what were you working with? Uh, well, when we had the donated computers, we were still working with 486, okay. you know, machines and trying to, uh, you know, find network cards and, mm -hmm. you know, um, and get them built pretty slow. Uh, the first cable modems were coming out at that time and, you know, figuring yeah. out how to bring a cable connection in and share it using a proxy server and oh, man. all that exciting stuff. Um, and that just sprung into doing consulting for various nonprofits in Lowell, including the food bank and the, the main homeless shelter, uh, the Rape Crisis Center, and a few other mm -hmm. places. Um, was working a lot with the Lowell Cable Access okay. uh, Telecommunications yep. at the time, and actually went through his training on television production. Yeah. Uh, yep. Now they have a big. Don't, don't they have like a computer lab there too? Yeah. Because they do a lot of teaching. Yeah. Um, I don't know what they're still doing, but at mm -hmm. the time, you know, during the 90s, the, um, the bridge, the digital divide campaign was mm -hmm. huge in terms of bringing computer access to people who couldn't afford it. Yeah. Uh, so the Lowell Telecommunications was offering public computer access to residents, and we actually got some grant money in some of the shelters to actually create public computer labs where people could come in and have okay. internet access and okay. some basic training and word and mm -hmm. for job skills. Wow. Wow. Did you find it was really changing a lot at that time? Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, nothing compared to the changes yeah. in the last few years. Yeah. Um, but it was an exciting time. It was rewarding work. Yeah. Yeah. You know. All and, right. And so, that, so what was your next step after there? Well, I was going to say, and I mean, it, working in that environment kind of instilled in me the same philosophy I have toward technology now, and that technology is a tool. Okay. That's you know that's there to help us. Technology has no intrinsic mm -hmm. value. Mm -hmm. So you know, working there, 
with low budgets, which helps out now working in a town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, you learn to do more with less, but you learn how to use technology to empower people to mm -hmm. communicate and to improve their lives. And that mm -hmm. absent that, technology really yeah. doesn't have any value. So I was never enamored with technology for its own sake and having the latest and greatest processor and okay. having this and you know getting the you know the next generation data network mm -hmm. it was always about what technology could do okay you know that's really interesting because you know a lot of people it is about that you know it's like I want the newest version I want the latest features and things like that and a lot of times I see you know people they'll have like a really powerful smartphone and you know they're playing Angry Birds on it right. and things like that. So, so, um, so it was interesting watching yeah. some of the stuff on Steve, you know, Jobs biography. Yes. And that he had some of that, you know, same notion that technology should make us more human, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. less human. Right. So so, so I take it, so as you were kind of working on these computers and the networks and stuff, that led to uh, an opportunity? Yeah, and so I was doing that work. Um, I had a young family at the time and decided I had to make some money. Because mm -hmm. as rewarding as it is, psychology and working with the homeless <laughs> doesn't pay a lot. Yeah. Um, although I do miss the work. Um, and had an opportunity to go um, to the town of Norfolk, which is just a little south of here. Okay. Um, to act as an IT coordinator, and I started doing some consulting with them, mm -hmm. and just took off. It worked out really well. Um, started getting some experience uh, building their website and you know, just figuring out what it took to run the technology uh, for a town. Mm -hmm. What were you using to create their website at that time? Um, at that point, it was you know, town websites were still in their infancy, yeah. and it wasn't uncommon for a lot of small towns, especially, to not have a website or have a very rudimentary website. And so, like a lot of towns. They had a, a volunteer resident that was maintaining yep. the website. Um, and the town actually had a pretty cool technology called First Class that they were underutilizing. And we figured out okay. you know, that that could be used as a sort of a integrated email calendar, web editing collaboration wow. suite, very similar to what Google is doing mm -hmm. now. And this is the project we're working on with that. Um, and just kind of learning the ropes and figuring out how to present a town meeting and write a budget and oh. you know get buy-in from the boards and you know mm -hmm. you learn quickly in a town that having good ideas is not enough. You mm -hmm. have to be able to sell them. You have to get buy-in. You have to make people understand what the value proposition is mm. wow. for them. And those are you know been valuable skills. Yeah. In this career. Wow. So you really picked up a lot just kind of on the job, right? kind of poking around yeah. and, and figuring things out. Well, and at the same time, um, the police department was going through a, uh, an upgrade of their record system mm -hmm. and needed uh, IT. Um, and I got involved working in the police. And as a byproduct of that, um, found myself doing computer investigations into computer crimes and uh, really? you know, sort of dealing with that. And ended up going to the Reserve Police Academy and becoming a reserve police really? officer. Wow. And uh, was on the Metrolec computer crime unit okay. team in the area, and we were doing internet safety presentations and mm -hmm. you know, working with the detectives on different computer crimes. And you know, you're like a man of many talents. That's really amazing. <laughs> um, can you tell me what what it was like? Because you you mentioned that yeah. it was a time of great transition. You know, a lot of towns didn't have very detailed websites, and a lot of mm -hmm. new stuff was coming out. Was it difficult? incorporating the technology and training um, town hall staff and departments to utilize technology or did you find people really yeah that's always a challenge and I mean, a lot of the philosophy I have now came out of that experience in that the technology has to be simple it has to be something that integrates into the processes people are doing okay. technology can't be one extra thing that has to get done. Updating the website can't be one extra thing that has to get done. Okay. In order to create content, you have to have the engine of content be the work that people are doing. Mm -hmm. And so it's the, the trick is to build that, that technology into those processes so that people are doing the same or fewer steps than they are today. Okay. And they're producing websites and they're producing notices and producing calendar content and all of those. Because if it's one extra step, mm -hmm. you know, I've seen town websites that have invested a lot of money and brought in a consulting company and have this beautiful site. Mm -hmm. And I'll go back six months later, and the content's exactly the same yep. because you know they weren't able to build those engines in to feed it. Right, I see. Okay, so how long were you at Norfolk? I mean, Lowell. 
Well, no. I was in Lowell yeah. before going to Norfolk. Yeah. I probably worked with the homeless for about eight years. Okay. Well, I finished up school and kind of got my bearings on what I was doing. Yep. Um, I was in Norfolk for five years. Okay. Um, and then between the police experience and I had some experience integrating the school department, mm -hmm. um, there was an opportunity in Westford, which was a little closer to home at the time. And they were looking for somebody with experience working with police and school and you know wow. doing some of those projects. Wow. Um, right up your alley. <laughs> so um, in Westford, you know, was able to do some of the same stuff, create a vital website mm -hmm. uh, with content, um, you know, allowing residents to be more informed and breaking down some of those communications and transparency barriers. Yeah. Now you mentioned that um, in Norfolk you were an IT coordinator. Yeah. What was your position at um, Westford? Uh, IT director. IT director? Yeah. Okay. Um, and then just expanding on uh, really building a relationship with the school. Um, mm -hmm. Looking for some common places uh, to share resources, and um, you know, again, breaking down some of those communication barriers. Yeah. Um, Can you know what? Now that's like a really easy phrase to say. Yeah. Breaking down some of those communication barriers. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Like what it was like. Were there people who were really, you know, kind of reticent to to go on to this new technology, or was it difficult to get um, the public used to? interacting with the town government that way? What are some of the issues with that? Um, I mean, the biggest challenge in any organization, I think, are just some of the, the culture of the organization. Okay. And just how things have been done in the past, how people are used to doing something, um, maybe bad experience with doing something a particular way, you know, one time, or with a personality that didn't work, or with something that didn't work, and being reticent mm -hmm. about, you know, trying something new again. So my approach is, is you know, never to be heavy-handed. Mm -hmm. um, you know, kind of go in, look for places where there is common ground. Okay. You know, sort of prove that out in small testing grounds and gain trust, and you know, mm -hmm. build those relationships. Mm -hmm. You know, slowly again, not making it about the technology, but figuring out what the needs of the the various groups are and how to meet those. Mm. Um, but you know, in a way that is inclusive and you know, again, not heavy-handed. Yeah, yeah. Can you um, talk about some of the uh, successes that you had there, like some of the projects that you worked on that you were really excited about or, yeah, sure. or you felt made a big impact in the community? Yeah. Well, again, overhauling the websites. Um, in the first year, we overhauled the town website, 10 school websites, the library website, making government more transparent. Um, Again, making it easier for residents to follow what was happening in town government, making it easier for town government to communicate with the residents. We also did some cool stuff around uh, systems integration, linking different types of data. We're doing some of that in Hoppington now. Um, so, you know, once you've got this sort of core technology level, you know, how do you manage access to the data and how do you create databases and how do you link information in a meaningful and a reasonable, you know, a way that's useful. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if people have seen our, our property lookup tool here, yep. you know, we took information that already existed in sort of data islands in four or five different places and allowed people to go to one place to search and have all that information dynamically, yep. you know, populate and that sort of notion of not replicating information, having people talk to each other and... Mm. That's really interesting. Yeah, we did I, a lot with virtualization. Yeah, uh, you know, moving towards some cloud, uh, you know, hosted stuff and virtualizing some servers and. Okay. All right. So. I believe the next stop on the train yeah. is Hopkins. Yeah. So I'm going to take a quick break, sure. and then we'll be right back. So okay. Please stay tuned when we come back with more Manager's Corner with Chris McClure. Hello, welcome to HCAM Insights. Did you know that Hopkinton's television station has a Facebook page? Visit facebook.com slash HKMTV to be connected with all the latest news, events, and programming updates for HCAM. We have a lot of friends or fans or likes or whatever they call them now. You don't have to know how to use all the bells and whistles. We make it easy for you to stay connected and informed. So check it out and like us today. Welcome back to Manager's Corner with our IT director, Chris McClure, who is just about to tell us how he came to Hopkington. So you're working in Westford. Yeah. How did you um, come across the uh, opportunity in Hopkington, and, and what do you feel attracted you to it? Well, ironically, when I first came out to Massachusetts, I ran the marathon as a bandit when no I was 19. Kidding. Yeah, I ran it a couple of times. Oh, wow. Of course, I was 19 and could do it. 
<laughs> I could just jump in and run 26.2 miles at the time. So I think one of my bucket list things is actually train and, and run it for real now that I have to work at it. Uh -huh. um, so I was aware of Hoppington. Um, I've worked with Norman in the past, mm -hmm. and you know, like his style. Um, I'm somebody who likes to build and create things. Yeah. And there was an opportunity to come into an environment and to build and create yeah. and to do some exciting stuff. And yeah, there really had not been much of an <laughs> IT department at all in the history of Hopkinton. So you're really like pretty much the first person to kind of take on a lot of these big challenges. So when you were looking at, at Hopkinton, um, what did you see as like some of the big opportunities? Well, I saw, uh, again, communication. Mm -hmm. um, you know, how can we allow uh, the town hall to share the information and to communicate more directly mm -hmm. with the residents and how with each other? Mm -hmm. um, you know, and seeing, um, you know, it was kind of a, I like to say it's, it's one of the most exciting and scary times to be in technology mm -hmm. now because everything seems to be simultaneously possible. Oh. And so whereas 10, 15 years ago in IT, the question was, is it possible or can we do this? Mm -hmm. The expectation now is that everything is possible <laughs> oh. all at the same time. And it's about sort of picking a path and going through that path and not getting distracted. Mm -hmm. um, and so I saw an opportunity to come in here and you know, sort of do some master plan you know, type technology in terms of seeing where we should be going as a town relative technology and carving a path. Yeah. Uh, you know, picking um, you know, some of the, the best of the new emerging technology. Social media is very exciting, but very scary mm -hmm. for a town at the same time in terms of what's appropriate, what's not appropriate, and what's legitimate and what's not legitimate, and yeah. you know, what technology is going to be around, and how should we invest in this stuff, but also in this sort of paradigm of email being the primary communication tool is ending, and there are much more exciting ways to mm -hmm. communicate and you know collaborate in this Google project we're working on now, enabling town departments and boards and residents to collaborate in real time on you know documents and create them and you know have the calendars and and uh, you know talk to each other and then publish that information to the web and collect information back and to take all you know those different databases we have and to put web you know front ends on them and collect information uniformly to tie things to GIS so that all mm -hmm. the information we're collecting can be mapped and. You, you know, can you know run reports and what is GIS? Uh, GIS is uh, Geographic Information Systems. Okay. I mean, basically, to me, it's a really powerful database mm -hmm. um, that links everything by where it is in the world. Okay. So any report that you do, you can assign an address to. Yeah. And so it just makes reports. You know, imagine being able to look at your a police report of your crime for the year mm -hmm. and see it on a map. Oh. and see the trends and see where your, uh, your accidents were and where your car thefts were or whatever. Oh, you know, I to see. look at your schools yeah. as a map and to see which schools are doing better, which schools need improvement. Mm -hmm. you know, to look at your infrastructure, you know, to look on a map and see where all of your elevators are or where all of your pipes are you know, and to yeah. see which ones are more than five years old or you know, yeah. it's just a different way of looking at things and linking information. I see. And tying that together. So that's going to be a major drive. Yeah. Um, as we go forward to link all this information we have around a map. Yeah. Wow, that's really cool. Now, mm -hmm. I know you've been here about four months now. Yeah. And um, I would assume the biggest thing that you've been working on, I, I, from my perspective, would be the website. Yeah. So can you, is there anything you can tell us about the website? Sure. Well, we've been doing a lot of work uh, going live with Google Apps. Okay. Uh, moving our email and collaboration suite into the cloud with Google for all staff and boards. We're going live on February 21st. Um, okay. So it's going to be a fun week. <laughs> um, that's going to give us the tool set for departments and boards to manage content on the web and all these uh, new dynamic web 2.0 features. Mm -hmm. We've been working on migrating uh, the website to a more of a web 2.0 uh, platform. Um, the new website is going to be launching this spring. 
Um, there's still a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm. um, but it's going to be highlighted by RSS feeds and email subscriptions and the ability to subscribe via Twitter and subscribable dynamic calendars and you know, mm. a whole host of content and linking some of these data forms together and our document management system and GIS and permitting and mm -hmm. um, really highlighting some of the things that the town's been doing well and it just hasn't been spotlighted. Mm. So calling attention to some of that stuff. And um, you had mentioned earlier in the show that one of your big focuses on using technology as a tool and not having it be you know, additional tasks right. that are tied onto that. Um, how, how is that going? <laughs> it just well, seems like there's a lot of different things that yeah. are going on now. Well, I mean, so for example, a couple of the uh, so the creation of, say, public notices or agendas, for example. Okay. So already, departments and boards are preparing things to be posted on web emailing it to be posted, you know, having it uploaded, et cetera. Mm -hmm. On the new site, we're going to have them with those same amount of steps, create the same agenda, create the same email, you know, email it to the website, and in that same process, have it get posted on the home page, have it be available as an RSS feed, have it be available as a tweet, have it be available as an email subscription. Mm -hmm. So just magnifying the ability to access that information and to have residents be able to pull the information and subscribe the information to them, yeah. um, you know, in their email, on their mobile phones, on their home computer, and yeah. really drive that information out with the same amount of work, or in some cases, you know, less work. And we're trying to make the whole process more transparent. One of the big pushes is we're making, you know, packets available on the website to the public. Okay. So if you want to build a board of selectmen meeting packet in the near future, you can go and just pick a date mm -hmm. and get the packet for that you know, meeting okay. uh, without having it have to be emailed or, you yep. know, et cetera. And just creating that um, historical archive of information as well. Yeah. So, you know, putting that information out there and keeping it available online so that a year from now I can go back and look at what a packet was. And Right. So. Right. Wow. So um, are there any other things, like any other gadgets or any other types of um, functionality, functionality that you might be bringing to the website? I'm sure there are. <laughs> I can't think of anything offhand now, but I mean, there's a lot. Um, one of the, the, the cool things we're working with the, the Google um, open source sort of technology is this Google gadget technology, and we're starting playing around with building our own sort of apps okay. that can be plugged into the website and can be distributed and can be subscribed you know, to via other pages. So mm -hmm. it's possible to have not only just the information, but entire tools be you know, distributable. Right. searches or other um, things that you know feed right into the town website that you can you know install on other pages mm -hmm. the one thing I do want to point out is we've, we've made a, a real solid effort to make sure that we're not requiring residents to do anything with Google in order to use our services that everything okay. we're doing is going to be open source you know standard and I've, I've made a real uh, clear efforts that nothing you're going to do on the Newtown website requires you to sign up for Gmail or anything I see. proprietary because I'm okay. a big open source yeah. proponent and I don't like requiring <laughs> <laughs> okay. one vendor over another in that respect. So there's a lot of, um, of web stuff going on and I'm sure it's just been occupying yeah. a huge amount of your time. Yeah. Um, are, are there other areas that you're, are you a department of one? Who do you, how many people are in your department? I'm a department of one, okay. um, and part of that is managing resources well, mm -hmm. um, working with vendors, working with community resources um, to leverage work, working with committees, um, and it's, you know, it's very doable with the, with the cloud technology and some of the other you know, stuff out there. I yeah. rarely see this field, especially in towns, kind of shifting to having you know, a local IT director um, who's a visionary and doing some planning and mm -hmm. you know managing resources and coordinating projects, um, but having a relatively modest operating budget and mm -hmm. you know just you know dealing in the cloud and dealing with virtualization and okay. uh, a much more consistent way of managing. Um, so I'm a department of one, but I enjoy the challenge. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the the other big pushes this year is the collaboration with the school. Mm -hmm. um, we've put together a really nice joint capital plan with the school um, that in involves some um, cloud migration, some virtualization of shared resources, um, some standard purchasing of technology and standardization around which workstations get used, mm -hmm. and some sharing of Wi-Fi resources, you know, et cetera, um, and also doing a public safety uh, collaboration project, oh, cool. um, increasing redundancy, 
um, doing some virtualization and mm -hmm. you know creating a public safety data center. Okay. Well, this is really really interesting. We're getting kind of tight on time. So, uh, in, in about a minute or so, can you tell me there, are there any other projects that you either have been working on or that you see coming up in the future that you haven't yet had a chance to touch upon? Right. Well, the exciting thing about the web and the Google app project is that's going to keep us busy for a long time and grow with us. Mm -hmm. And we're really invested. We're actually doing um, some training in the coming weeks and making sure that as we invest in this technology, we're also empowering people to use it. So we're sticking with what we're doing and really working to grow with it. But we're also looking at you know, improvements to the phone system and adding you know, voice over IP technology to save some money and also add some functionality and service mm -hmm. um, to the way we process phone calls. We're working on more joint efforts around managing uh, the phone systems and the print management between you know, all town departments in the school. Mm -hmm. Continuing to work on those data projects. Um, you know, we're looking at you know some archival projects of getting some of our old plans you know scanned and indexed and available online, and ah. you know just using the tools that we have and, mm -hmm. and just keeping you know. And there's always, I'm sure, there's going to be surprises that come up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm sure. So all right, well, Chris, we're at the end of our show. I wanted to thank you very much for coming on and, and sharing a little bit about your history and about your vision for the town and all the work that you're doing for us. Oh, thank you, Jim. All right. And thank you very much for joining us on this episode of Manager's Corner. Please tune in next time where we'll have uh, another conversation with another person who is helpful in our town government. Take care. Hello, welcome to HCAM Insights. Did you know that Hopkinton's television station has started a survey? That's right, we want to know what you think about us. Please tell us what you like, what we can improve, or even programming ideas you'd like to see us produce. You will find the survey at hcam.tv survey. And thanks for taking a few minutes to give us your thoughts. Hello, welcome to HCAM Insights. Did you know that Hopkinton's television station has underwriters who help bring you the programs we create? You will see underwriter credits at the top of the hour on HCAM TV and on our website, hcam.tv. Underwriting on HCAM shows their commitment to community in Hopkinton. So please, when you see an underwriter, thank them for helping to support your local nonprofit TV station.